Okay, so this is uh, the last section in the uh, crystalline state of the polymers. And in the textbook, uh, this one is a chapter, chapter 17.5, which is what we call the uh, uh, liquid crystal polymers. And liquid crystal polymers is a special types of polymers uh, that is uh, made, and I think I briefly mentioned about the uh, Kevlar, uh, in the in the uh, some section when I teach uh, when I teach to you the Kevlar Kevlar is a trademark name by the Dupont and we are using this one this is a essentially aromatic polyamide okay you know polyamide is nylon nylon is all aliphatic this is an aromatic polyamide and when you have an aromatic group with an amide group repeating it and there will be a, a some kind of a um, very strong uh, unit that can show uh, the liquid crystal properties and the, you are really chains are really not flexible anymore they are having a really extended conformation what you guys learn about uh, uh, for the liquid crystal polymers and this is what they call the mesogen that is a rigid unit you know I talked to you guys about this right this one doesn't hold it anymore when your chains are stiff enough. It's not flexible chain. It's a very rigid chain. Because of that, it has a very uh, pros and cons. The pros is it has a very amazing mechanical properties sometimes, and, and the flow properties are very unique. The thing, uh, however, however uh, is also hard to process, uh, and then the, also the material is very expensive, and those are the, also the draw, drawbacks on that. So this is a polyamide-based one, and then the something also uh, quite well-known, uh, the polymer is named, I think it's called a Vectra. That's a trade name. And uh, the Vectra is uh, uh, made uh, by the Celanese and before. So I think it's not as, uh, but this is, I just wanted to say, that's a, uh, aromatic polyester. And... This is part of the whole like a uh, high super strength mechanical property families, and it has a, its own unique uh, application. The Kevlar is uh, I think that you can find it more information there. The important uh, key one is understanding the messaging unit, and this is essentially the basic component of the messaging unit is something looks like that with an aromatic group uh, that is uh, uh, com uh, bridged by let's say N double bond N. And this could be a nice uh, rigid unit in the planner. Uh, this could be, you can think about CH, double bond CH. That's another one that can, can bridge in this, right? So these are the very much, uh, in a way, very much like a messaging like this. There's, there's a very rigid plane. And let me finish up the, by drawing this. Yeah, so very rigid plane. Okay. So this rigid plane is a messogen, and if you uh, continue to think about that way, I can also argue that, okay, so the aromatic group with uh, uh, the C-O-N-H, that's also kind of planar, right? So that's what the Kevlar has a, in the unit built it in the aromatic unit. So this is all messogen. You can think about ester bonding can be think about that way as well. So these are the very rigid messaging unit, and these messaging units are essentially all connected by a simple bond. And this is more like an example of a Kevlar, but this one has a super difficult process abilities. So they actually to enhance the process abilities, they put this one space them out, and by is what they call the flexible linkers. So this is the flexible links. This is flexible links going across it. And people trying to kind of, trying to catch both, which is um, uh, better mechanical properties and also easier to process. Because if things are really stiff uh, molecules, sometimes you can just, materials are there, it's just um, hard to make in you know, a different forms of the shapes. So, uh, and this is an, an idea, and the people say, why don't I put this one as a side chain? So liquid crystal can be put it in. There's a, a lot of academic interest uh, trying to understand this, the liquid crystal, um, in this way.
And this one, this idea can be made it into a reality because if you have a CH2CH with a COO, okay, sorry about this, CO, let me put it a better way, CO, O and ester with a mesogen. This is a not not a difficult way to make making it. And then by putting this one, uh, you can make this one uh, into a, a the, the vinyl polymerize and the, with a liquid crystal develop. Sometimes uh, this design uh, need a little bit tweaking because uh, they actually put a little bit CH two CH or well, CH CH two. Let me just say, instead of saying, repeating that way, CH2N as a flexible linker. So this is a, what they're trying to say, the flexible linker, uh, so that you can essentially isolate the tendency for them from the pack themselves as a liquid crystal uh, with a, a give a, not be interfered by this, the property of the main chain backbone, which is a more flexible. So this is a two different mine of the polymers together. They're trying to tune the property, and this is a, what is called the strategy called the side chain liquid crystal polymers, and uh, those two are main chain liquid crystal polymers. So having said that, I need to talk to you about the, the different types of liquid crystal, and this is also introduced in the textbook, so I can do that. And uh, the A is almost like a messaging. This is all the messagings are lined up to a main axis, but I just have a one uh, the alignment there, and that's what we call the pneumatic uh, liquid crystal. So this is a pneumatic liquid crystal. And the one that goes actually, I don't like the way the textbook write it is. Uh, the second one is what is called a smectic. And they are kind of align themselves together, but at the same time, they have a sort of the layer-like uh, message and alignment. So this is a secondary uh, ordered structure within this, and the liquid crystal. This is the, what is called a smectic. And the one that in the, in the middle is what is called a cholesteric, and then this one is more like a rotating. They actually trying to show you the idea about this is a message and orientation, uh, which is oriented this way, and this is oriented that way, and this is oriented back, and this is oriented again. So they, they're trying to show you this orientation of this the messages through the certain axis, and then that's the that is more like likely to what they call the cholesteric. And there are other called the discordic too, but this textbook shows only three different types. And I look at the uh, one, and then this uh, the in the internet side, and there are people introduced that the pneumatic phase and the smectic phase, which is similar, and the cholesteric phase is all like more like a layer phase with a kind of a twisted, right? The, they they rotate themselves, and this is the same principle of the liquid crystal. How do they control the light transmission? When you look at the LCD screen liquid crystal display, right? So this is a way that how control their light transmittance by controlling the orientation on that. And this is a, a, a lot of area that actually technology depends on the, for the display, for the liquid crystal displays. As far as the cholesterol phase is, so now, now light is, cannot be easily penetrate, penetrate, and so that became more opaque, and so on. Yeah. Uh, for the smectic, there are two different smectic, and this is smectic A and smectic C, and this is, uh, I found a nice picture showing up there. So it is a way that your orientation of the message in itself and or overall orientation of the uh, the, the liquid crystal uh, message in, uh, in a macroscopic direction, they are kind of well aligned, right? Whereas uh, the the overall the direction for the message in, versus just a macroscopic way that you trying to what they call the shear alignment you can you can just give a trying to shear align them in a macroscopic way <coughs> so this is more like uh, the macroscopic shear alignment sometimes uh, they are geometrical direction there they are kind of the tilted right this is a more tilted This is more like a tilted direction of the message and alignment. That's uh, what we call the message and 
orientation when you're trying to aligning it and uh, that's what called smectic C okay so those are the the basic languages of a liquid crystal there are two different liquid crystal system that uh, we people uh, typically talked about I think that I should I should tell you and that this, uh, this, this one is actually I was choosing this uh, one because of trying to explain that and what this uh, liquid crystal really means. Liquid crystal means a crystal, which is like a lattice uh, structure, but that can flow. And so that's the, what that really an example. And there are two types, and which is a temperature base. When you change the temperature, you are seeing the uh, liquid crystal, that's a thermotropic. And then the lyotropic means a concentration base. And uh, this, uh, uh, the, this is a thermotropic is here. Uh, this is an example of the, some kind of messaging. Okay, it's a rigid messaging that, that you can see that that's a messaging unit. And this one is essentially sort of the Taylor unit. This Taylor unit just gives a little bit more fluidi fluidi fluidity uh, for this liquid crystal can flow. But if you look at that, at the temperature below 22.4 degrees, is actually they form the crystal. This is essentially solid, right? And then and no flow, no fluidity. And that's just like any any kinds of solid should be. And typically, most solid uh, they go into the melting temperature. This is a melting temperature. Uh, this is a melting temperature, uh, what, they, what they call, they became isotropic, right? So they, they became simply isotropic, and that's the, that's the normal, normal way. But in the case for the, this is a crystal melting temperature. So we can just still call the melting temperature. But we don't go to the isotropic right away. There is a window for LC window between the, 22 to 34 degrees C, eventually at the temperature higher than what is called the TI, isotropic temperature, uh, and then you, are, you will see the random orientation of messaging, and, so, and then it will be uh, look, uh, look dark. This one looks, looks dark under crossed polarized microscope, right? Under cross polarized microscope cross polarizer so then and you can see that the optically they are different and also you can see that the, in the DSC DSC can be used to identify those as well because this movement from from state to the other involves with certain kind of thermodynamic change of the heat capacity of the molecule the second example is a, what they call the lyotropic and this is a quite common in the area called the surfactant. Surfactant has a polar tail, polar head, and lipid tail, and depending on the design, they can form this. So aggregates in. So this is a when you have a uh, have a lot of. This is the water in the middle, right? And then this is a the oil in the outside, and that's an example. And if you have a, uh, the other way is uh, you have oils. This is a, probably the micelle that you, you, are, you are forming it when you have a soap particles, when you have a soap in the water, trying to get the dirt inside of this micellar pocket or oily pocket. But overall, the micelle form this uh, polar. So this is a water outside, and the oily thing is inside, right? And uh, okay, so this is an oil, oily thing is inside. And so depending on the concentration, that they call amplifier means a surfactant. This is, I find it in the Wikipedia pages, uh, so to, to do that, so you can, you can see the more details. They can form, sometimes they can form the uh, layer-like structures. And this is a very similar to the, our, the, the, actually this depends on the, your, uh, surfactant design. Sometimes they have a polar tail with a two lipid trails are coming out, and then they actually can can form some. Depending on the, their their design, they can do that. And actually, our body has this uh, this kind of the body 
at the cell has this the uh, double layers of the cell wall is having this the lipid forming this kind of the order structures in a, a very much more like a uh, sheet like structures at some point that they have uh, forming something very very unique structure this is a, a bi continuous structures you know they they call the cubic by con, you know cubic cubic lattice and this is a hexagonal cylinders right this is more like a spherical structures so most of you think about this is a spherical micelle they they kind of pack into different kind of arrays sometimes they they form the uh, body center cubic face center cubic or simple cubic depending on the the, the tail sizes or the design of the surfactant, but they can also sufficiently higher concentration. If the concentration goes up from the low, right? So from the low state, this is a more like a spherical, and the higher concentration, more like a think about spheres are kind of fused into a more elongated one uh, between, uh, that's, a, that's a cylindrical structure. If you go to the higher one, the simple picture is this, the lamella structures. But somewhere in between the cylinders and the lamella structure, they form this intriguing the bicontinuous cubic structures as you shown in the uh, red channel in this uh, phase diagram. So this is a, another area of the study that how the concentration and the temperature can play a role to control the some sort of a, some sort of the amphiphilic molecule uh, packing, and that they they form these structures. And uh, this is a uh, also area of an interest for many uh, applications to control the nanoscale pores and uh, and to try to use it uh, for different kinds of separation applications and an optical application and so on. Okay, so this will be the uh, that you can you can see the lyotropic crystal if you want to have a look at it. But that will be the end of the uh, chapter 17, and uh, let me stop here.